got a nice velvet deer that one of the clients over here at Whitetail Heaven got, Moses. And we're gonna try to teach you all how to cape a deer properly, show you some points of what I see that come into a shop where guys unfortunately screw up a little bit and sometimes it shows in the quality of the mount. But we'll start with the velvet. So like everybody comes to Kentucky because it's one of the only states to shoot a velvet deer, whitetail. There ain't too many states where you get to shoot a velvet deer. So you, you killed this deer. I know we got it in the barn already, but you, you know, you got this deer, you harvested it. I see a lot of deer that come in that guys, you know, you get excited because you go see your deer and what every hunter wants to do is go and grab the horns immediately and they rip it off the ground and they want to look at it and they're showing their, their buddies the deer. But you don't want to do this, man. The, the velvet is an extension of the skin that comes off the head. It's really thin, it's really fragile. We're on, what day is today, the 9th, the 10th? 10th of September already. This buck here, I mean, he's almost, he's about ready to shed his velvet. You can see he's tipping. He probably wouldn't be in velvet for another 24 hours, probably, I would guess. I mean, I might be wrong, but it is what it is. So you, you get up to the deer. I tell my kids when we're hunting, we shoot a velvet deer, you get up to it. I always try, no matter what, to just grab it by the ears. Pick it up off the ground, grab it by the ears, rotate it. We're taking pictures. Whether you're one-handed or not, you can grab both those ears, pick them up, get them adjusted. You don't have to be holding the bases. Stick your fingers in the ears, pick them up, turn them sideways. I know it's hard to do while he's hanging here, but it works. Uh, another key point to it, you know, you're out in the field, you're gutting the deer, whatever you're doing, there's blood all over. Try not to get too much blood on it. Blood is not a good thing. Harbors bacteria, makes hair slip. I know most hunters have heard, heard of hair slippage. It's just not a good thing to do. You know, other than that with the velvet, get them cooled down as quick as you can. I mean, the, one of the most important things in our early season hunt is it's usually, today was what, 98 degrees? I mean, it's hot out there. This, this whole entire deer, if you let it sit out, it could rot in a matter of hours. And it's the same thing for the velvet to the cape. So get it, get it taken care of as quick as you can, skinned out. Uh, one of the most important things, if you don't have access to a freezer, at least get the head in a refrigerator if you can, or cool it down, you know. Just go, it goes a long ways. It might not save some of them, but it'll help for sure. I mean, it won't hurt. So just try not to get the deer full of water either. You know, you don't want to soak the deer down. A lot of guys will take and put it on ice or put it in ice. If you're going to put it in a cooler, drain the water off your ice, put it in there. You know, the water harbors bacteria again too, so it's just another tip. Alright guys, so we're now we're here to the cape, skinning off the deer to bring it to your taxidermist. And a lot of the times, guys, some guys do a really good job, some guys don't. But here's some major points that I see that people do when they bring capes in. For a basic shoulder mount, they're going to take, and a lot of guys, taxidermists will tell them, Follow the white hair line. Well, a lot of guys will come, as you can see, there's a white hair line here and a white hair line here. If you take the inside line, you just screwed it up. And the, all that cape is used to pull around to give you more of the shoulder of the deer. You have to follow the outside edge of this line. And as you can see, it comes up until your elbow and then there's long hair and you stay anytime you're ever skinning any animal. If there's a long hairline where your hair patterns come together, so the hair on this side is coming, the hair on this side is coming together, see how it creates that little hairline right there? Whether it be a bear, a bighorn sheep, a mountain goat, it doesn't matter, all animals have this. If you're gonna get a life-size mount of this deer, you would wanna follow that long hairline. It's easier for the taxidermist to hide the seam. So I'm gonna start cutting where I would skin this deer for a shoulder mount. I'm gonna start almost all the way at the knee. I'm gonna come into this hairline here and I use scalpels. I'm gonna follow that long hairline. Keep following it. Even though I went way past what I need, when I talk to guys, if they call me in and tell me how far to go up, typically, your elbow that I told you about, four inches. 
but I always like a little bit more. Today's new floor pedestals, wall pedestals, they're giving a lot back of the deer and you still gotta wrap it around the form. So it's gonna come back, it's gotta wrap around. It's just 10 times easier for a taxidermist to have enough of the skin to do what he thinks he needs to do with it. We're just gonna take and cut around the whole deer. I know some, there's probably gonna be some guys on a video when they're watching this be like, well, why is he doing that? Why is he not skinning the whole thing down? Typically I would, but it's like, what time is it? 1.30 in the morning and most taxidermists get called way in the middle of the night and they're like, hey, I got a deer, come skin it. So I'm not gonna do the rest of the cape job and deboning. My man, Caleb there, he's the guide. So he's gonna take care of the rest of that process after I'm done. Here I'm gonna go around the deer. And from here on, some guys will cut it, some guys will peel it down. I'll start it a little bit. And I, depending on how quick you wanna be, you can try to take all the meat off with it. I advise guys that are just trying to do this on their own that haven't done a lot to not worry about the meat so they don't cut holes in the hide. Typically, when you're caping a deer like this, this tends to be the softest skin on this animal that I see more cuts on, is the brisket area. And inside the armpits, it's just real thin skin Take your time there and I'll kind of just start it and just keep working my way down. Sometimes you can grab it and pull it easy. Sometimes you can use a winch. Guys will tie it, the hide to a winch and pull on it. In a second here, I'm going to get to the front and I'll try to pull it down and see what we got. See if it'll come down or not or if it's attached. I'll, I'll also skin these all the way down to the knee. Over here. And this deer is fairly fresh, so like I'll show you. And you grab it, just pull it down. You don't have to worry about it. Skin in every square inch of it. You get to a spot where there's a lot holding on, take your knife and go back and just release that area. Go back and see if you can pull it down. And it'll go. Now I'm to the point where I'm real close to where I'm gonna cut it off, the, the actual meat of the animal. And I prefer to take meat measurements of my mount or the carcass measurements for my forms and whatnot so I have accurate measurements of it. There's always been discussions about, you know, how much this animal shrinks down at death because the blood isn't pumping through it anymore. I found that it's just the most accurate way. If I have to alter the form because I get a, measure, uh, a form in that's too small, I would rather make the deer bigger. It's easier than to make the form smaller. So when I, when I do this, some guys will bring the deer in all the way to where the atlas, where the skull attaches to the verse, first vertebrae, which is way you know down in here. I prefer to at least leave four to five inches. I got guys that'll bring me the whole neck, but I don't need that. Three to four inches, right where this, you see where this muscle group here attaches and starts right here, looks like a Y. 
cut it off right there. That's plenty for me to take my measurements to try to be as accurate as I can with your mount when you bring it in.